Hey guys and welcome again to my channel and this video I guess the second butterfly in the spring marathon we'll see that's the second video we'll see how many it will be so for today as you can see also on the sketch we will be again painting a butterfly so because you know why not <laughs> and again I did to do my sketch earlier and it is available for download from my website. There is a link in the description box. You can go ahead and download it for yourself if you like that. And if not, if you want to sketch it yourself, that's also fine. That's something that you can absolutely do. So again, same thing as yesterday. I am using this Centenaire watercolor paper. It is 300 GSM or 140 pounds, 18 by 26 centimeters, 7 by 10 and 1 quarter of an inch. It is also called pressed. And uh, first thing I will do is trace my sketch onto this watercolor paper and also I will be using some masking fluid. So if you do have a masking fluid, prepare that for yourself. Also a little bit of the salt. If you have it, also prepare it. And if you don't have a masking fluid, you can use a masking tape to cover your butterfly. And again, there is a video about that, how I do that. So. I will put the link uh, on the screen and if you don't know how I do it, you can just go ahead and check it out. If you do have a masking fluid, of course, you can use that. As I said, first, we will start with tracing our paper and I will just place the tracing paper. Just want to see how I'm going to position my butterfly so it is somewhere in the middle of that sketch and just pick up a little bit of the tape and I want to glue it onto my watercolor paper because I don't want my sketch to move like that so I've just glued it here and we can now trace that for tracing you can use any pencil you have that's just fine so I will just go ahead and start with my butterfly and do the tracing yes I have just noticed how my camera stopped when I started tracing but you know I have uh, traced the entire sketch and then just with this kneaded eraser I remove the excess graphite because I don't like the graphite to stay on my paper and well I guess you know how to trace a sketch so I'm sorry for my camera but sometimes it just won't listen so let's just move on to adding a masking fluid and for that I will be using this silicone brush and this um, I do like that because really uh, the masking fluid removes very easily from the brush and also you can cover quite large surfaces with it I was using some um, well I guess I was using some oh my god I'm missing words today I don't know what's going on <laughs> Uh, so I'm not really sure what's going on with my camera but it stopped again <laughs> while I was adding this masking fluid well that's annoying it must be also quite annoying for you too I will just mind it a little bit more right now because yeah something is going on I'm not really sure what so I did put the masking fluid on my butterfly and now I'm just going to put it onto my flowers. And as I was saying twice, well, I was repeating myself and it stopped again. I guess maybe it doesn't want me to talk about that. I was saying that I was really missing you guys and painting with you. And this is just something that I thought would be fun to do. I did have some... Uh, a little bit of the health issues so I did not really paint <laughs> so it's not really that I did not record it's that I have um, 
I wasn't even painting. So, so again, I had issues with my camera and it stopped before I finished uh, putting this uh, masking fluid on and I did put it onto the butterfly and the flowers. I left it to dry completely and you will know it's dry when you tap it and you, it's a little bit sticky, gluey, but it doesn't leave anything on your fingers. It is completely dry, it doesn't move, so it is sticky, but it just doesn't move. That's how you will know it's, well, I guess completely dry. And now we can move on to painting. And this time I have even cleaned my palette. Not fully, but yep. So I will be using some greens, some pinks, orangey color for the butterfly, but that's when we get to that. First, uh, we will start with the background and I will get this a little bit larger flat brush, wet the background, and I won't be placing a masking tape around. I'm not bothered if the edges aren't clean, crisp. So if you like crisp white edges, you put the masking tape and I guess I won't be doing that. So just gonna wet the entire paper, everything, let the water soak in slightly. like that and while that just fully dry uh, soaks in a little bit i will pick up my colors i will pick up a little bit of the green a little bit of the brown so you know what i will do i will just spray onto my palettes a little bit and this time I will also be using these colors from Etcher. So let's just spray to activate the paint and I will just use the paint straight from the straight from the palette. And gonna get a little bit larger brush. This is I think number 12. And I'm gonna get that brown, put it here so when you activate the paint it just moves a little bit easily and you can just put it straight onto your paper i do want it i do want those colors to be quite saturated so i won't be putting it on my palette each of them but just if I don't need mixing them. A little bit of the green. So here to, next to the butterfly. Some green. I will place it here also. A bit around my butterfly here and I will mix in a little bit of that green with some yellow to create something similar to sap green a little bit lighter green so if you have a sap green you can use sap green and just gonna top it also again here and there like that and then I will get a little bit of this is pretty pink from Etcher I'm gonna place it here and I'm gonna mix that with the skin pink just to tone it slightly down like that it's a beautiful pink and put it in the back we do have some flowers here in the back so they will bleed of course dry And 
and some few here. Like that. And I will place a little bit more here. It's just going to look like it's in the background. There's some flowers. And also I will get a little bit of this Wow Pink. This is a little bit different tone. So it will create some diversity in the background. So like a little play of the shadows also. These colors won't be completely equal, same. So that. So that's very happy background. <laughs> and now I will get a little bit smaller brush. I do have some here. I just want to pick up a little bit of the paint and here I have some water sitting. So I'm just using a brush and picking up that excess water because now I will I will add on top some clean water and I do want to pick up all the excess water so it doesn't create puddles like here we do have some puddles here so just to create a little bit of the texture with those splatters you see how different colors react differently with water like that and also as I promised we will use a little bit of the salt and I will just put it here and there onto the flowers We'll see what, what sort of effect they will create. You know, salt is always... People ask me, I don't have the same result with salt as you do. Well, you know what? I don't have the same result either. Always. Sometimes it just does one thing. Sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on how much water is sitting on your paper. Which pigments are you using? A lot of things are influencing that that uh, salt so don't be bothered with that just try and it will be a try and error sometimes it will work a little bit stronger sometimes less and that's all fine so let's just leave this to try this background and we will move on to the butterfly actually before I before I do that I do want a little bit of the pink just splattered here and there and a little bit of the green also there you go now we will leave this to dry so this is now completely dried and you can see the effect of the salt. So here and there it's a little bit stronger and somewhere a little bit uh, less. So I'm just going to remove the rest of the salt that is still not the salt. there you go and now I will also remove the masking fluid because we will move on to painting our flowers and butterfly there you go I removed it all and now I will just paint my butterfly 
And for the butterfly, I will be using some um, brownish color. And I'm just gonna go do a couple of circles because I do want to leave some spots white so and then just rinse my brush and now just smudging the paint I did not you could have seen I did not wet my paper and just when you rinse your brush you will just remove some of the paint and create some darker and some lighter parts on your on a wing and we won't over complicate anything just gonna do a simple wings and a little bit more I will add here and there to make it a little bit more interesting like that and some here just on the edge that wing like that then gonna go up do the same thing in this upper part again leaving some parts white and then rinse my brush and move paint around create some smoother edges and again some diversity in the in color like that and what you can do is get maybe a different brush and that's what I'm gonna do I will do I will get a different brush to create these this parts these circles and then with this brush I'm gonna this clean water I'm gonna go around And soften those edges you have to work pretty fast here because we're not using we, we did not wet our paper so just keep that in mind if you don't want a harsher transitions in between your lines so that's why I'm doing it in sections just going from one part to the other like that and then this is we have just one more little part of this upper no lower wing like that and then just I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of the paint here like that and then just go on the edge of that wing just again to, to make a distinction between that upper and the lower part like that and then we will add a little bit more of the details I will get some black a little bit more And I'm 
just going to tap in here and there around those circles I've created like that or those freckles just going to add a little bit of the black here and there later on we will do a little bit more of the details around them and those veins but for now that's going to be enough and I will just move on to the upper part and do exactly the same thing again going to use that brown but this time I will mix in I will mix it in also with some orange but first we'll do the brown like that and we have here maybe so with this brush again I'm gonna soften that move the paint around slightly then again with this brush just going to add a little bit more of the freckles like that and again soften that with second brush like that and I'm gonna go outside the edges add a little bit more of that darker brown here and there that and then also I will just get a little bit of the orangey color and I do have here an Etcher palette this orange it's quite quite orange I'm gonna place it here just to see so it's very very orange so I'm gonna add just a little bit of the red to it it's going to be very very orange you can see that but it's yellowish orange and let's just mix let's just get this little bit larger brush and I'm gonna leave here also a few freckles just gonna go a little bit inside of this also with that orange just get a little bit more of the red this is still not completely dry just gonna place it in connect those two and get a little bit more of the of that brownish as I said you can just paint your butterfly as you like You don't have to use the same colors as I am if you prefer to make it different color that's definitely something you can do like that and then with this smaller brush I will get just a little bit of sepia this is from white nights quite dark brown and I will just go here around these edges
again add those top pins and just maybe add a little bit of the sepia here to that lower wing to connect those two and then just again rinse my brush and soften that edge and just again to connect those two I will add a little bit of that orange here and there also on the lower wing like that so because the upper one is very very bright and I just want to connect those two a little bit more of this brown now that this is drying it's getting quite light I really wanted to make it somewhat brighter like that so again as I said we will do a little bit more of the details but now we can move on to this wing and for that one first I will get this orange and paint the entire wing with the orange upper and lower just add a little bit more and also lower one just be careful because if you want to make sure that you don't have the bleeds and if you want a nice edge between those two just leave this one to dry completely or maybe dry it yourself like that and then I will just add a little bit of that brownish color again just here and there like that and then with this smaller brush actually I'm gonna use quite small brush I'm gonna get sepia because I don't want a harsh very strong bleeds I don't want a lot of paint on my brush so I'm using a smaller this is a detail brush from Raphael like that and then just go inside with it it is going to bleed because paper is wet however it will leave some markings in between some that some of that orange color I used like that and then just gonna do a little bit more of the details like that there you go and again as I said we will do a little bit more of the details when it all dries you can do also while this is still wet if yours is wet if not you can do this when dry because I will do this so it, this part has now dried so more or less so you can see I'm also adding details on a dry 
and this part if you want to soften any edge just rinse your brush and soften it like that so that's for now and I will now paint the butterfly the body of butterfly I'm gonna get some orange again that I have a little bit of the orange here still and I'm just gonna do that part that it's gonna be orangey get a little bit of the brown put the brown in like that and then soften this like that and I do have a little bit of that dark brown its body adding some details here and there If you want to pick up the paint you can do that while the paint is still wet so I will do a little bit more of the details again later on and his There's his feet and also his antennas, like that. So again, as I said, we will do a little bit more of the details when it dries. And I will paint in now the flowers and for the flowers I will be using this light pink. that I did use for the background and paint in quite light wash for the first layer of those flowers very very light wash you can leave maybe even some parts white that's what you want like that and then just gonna get a little bit more and also gonna get this pink mix that in and get a little bit of the sepia mix that in to create some shadow color and then gonna paint in the parts that are in the shadow with that darker pigment so just looking where the where those shadows are gonna leave this one to dry slightly to add in that petal that it's gonna be darker and this one like that and we have here also a little bit of the shadow like that so let's just uh, leave all that to dry and this is now dry so I will get a detail brush that I do like to use when especially when painting butterflies this is a synthetic brush so I'm gonna add in a little bit more of the details with that those darker as I was saying parts of the butterfly I'm just pressing harder and then picking up the brush just to create those see harder and then slightly picking up the brush 
So this brush is something that I really do love using when painting. So especially butterflies. Like that. And then just go a little bit around. Like that. Just to create Again, highlight on those veins, and you can, of course, paint in again those veins just as you like. You don't have to have the same details. I do believe some details are on the sketch, but of course you can just put them to your use and just make them the way you like. I do always encourage you to you know, just do something on your own. If you get an idea, just go with it. Doesn't have to, everything have to be the same? You don't have to always use exactly the same colors. Right? Just follow your own instinct and gut. That's how you will get your own style. find your own style. Which is always a great thing, right? To have your own style. And you're maybe your own favorite subjects to paint. Like that. I'm just gonna maybe add a little bit more of the details. Like that. To we'll make our butterfly gorgeous. like that and I do want to put in that darker one between and then just add maybe a few lines and highlights around those freckles and of course you can do those details also with um, with watercolor pencils or just uh, colored pencils. That's also fine. Some people I know love to use them and ask me if it's okay if I use it. Of course it is okay. It's your painting and you can do whatever you like like that and then just gonna do the back wing again pressing it harder lighter playing with the details on my butterfly. Like 
like that and I will just add a couple of more freckles with the this time this black this um, dark brown like that and let's do some details to the body of a butterfly. I do have here some something like um these eyes. I'm gonna rinse my brush and just soften it slightly. Also some details here. And then rinse my brush and again soften it. Those antennas. Like that. So let's just leave this for now to dry. And while that dries, I will paint in the finish of the flowers. And for the flowers, as I said, we're going to get a little bit more of this and a little bit more of that brown to create those darker. And just going to paint in. This is a leaf that it's turned away. And we have here a little bit more of the shadows, maybe some details here. These and then again like that and maybe on these here, this one is going to be darker. And here also some of the details so like that Not gonna again do too much details. Those flowers are not really that important to me. Let's just dry this and I will add just one more layer of color and this time I'm going to use yellow to my butterfly just to glaze on top and to add some shine to it like that and here on the front wing just gonna mind to skip those parts that I left white. See when you glaze on top you just add a nice shine to it, especially with yellow. Like that. No 
also I will get yellow and I will place that little bit of the yellow also on my flowers just glaze on top and get this pink and just add a little bit of that pink also just to make a stronger color like that just to make them a little bit more visible make them pop a little this is some sepia for those parts that are strong in the strongest shadow like that so now I will just get a little bit of the mix in a little bit of blue and a little bit of, I have here black a little bit of the black and I'm gonna mix that in with my yellow just to create this somewhat gray tone I'm just gonna put it inside here and there of those freckles just to add some detail to them also not to leave them fully white and I'm not gonna paint them entire way but just add a little bit of that color just to make them as I said slightly more uh, slightly more I guess with some color so let's just again dry this and I will finish off this happy colorful a uh, painting with some a Posca pen. Of course we will do some splatters. I mean that's just given. <laughs> and I will just do a few details on my on my butterfly and here and there just add some of the details to the, as I said, butterfly just to make it shine and a lot of the times I just do as I go I don't make strong plans when starting to paint because I do watch where I need a little bit or not really need where I do like a little bit more of the detail and then I just add them just to make some things pop shine some more details to those flowers so 
sometimes you just need to push a little bit that Posca pen to get it to work so Just looking if I want to add anything more. And I don't think so. I, I think that would be enough with Posca pen and I will just now get some paint and do a couple of Platters with that pink bit. Here around my flowers. You know what? I'm gonna get a little bit smaller brush. This one gives me a nicer control like that, a little bit of the green course a little bit of the brown those are the colors we use for a background and I like to use them to add a little bit more pigment and then I'm gonna get a little bit of the sepia quite saturated and do a couple of splatters to my butterfly that sepia to create some freckles and also here in the lower part like that so that's gonna be it I well I guess one more thing I will do anyway is get again that pink and just add a little bit more here on some of the parts of my flowers to make it slightly brighter That's it. Now we're definitely done with the second one also. So if you missed, this is the first, actually, this is the first one. And now we have our second one. So if you wanna join in paint this one also, just uh, watch the video from yesterday. I will put the link uh, in the description box for the playlist because by the time it will slightly create uh, more and more videos so I will put the link for the playlist yeah I'm thinking I want to do one more thing of course I want to do one more thing and while I'm doing that this is a white gouache so I'm just gonna do a couple of splatters with white gouache and while I'm doing that I want to thank you for joining in for painting with me today I hope you had fun and I hope you enjoyed this painting I hope you enjoyed this video if you did not paint with me 
at least oops. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed the video and had fun <laughs> listen to me chat blab and all that so thank you so much for joining in if you like it please hit the like button and share it comment if you haven't still please do subscribe to my channel that would be awesome and again thank you thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you next time bye